Hello, my name is Ryan Newmeyer, and I am the designer of Pave the Way, a game about bidding and auctioning, trying to build the best chain of concrete tiles as you build this brand new neighborhood. At the start of the game, everyone's going to get one of these company cards. It's going to give you special abilities that no one else is going to have throughout the rest of the game. You also get a cement truck card that tells you how much you can build. You can upgrade it throughout the game all the way up to 12 tiles that you can build at one time. On your turn, you get a chance to buy supplies. They start out at $10 per supply, but the more you buy, the more expensive they get. In this case, if I bought 10, go all the way up to here, and the price for the next person would be $11, it would have cost me $100 to buy those 10 units. I take them from my supply, and put them over here in my purchase materials. We also get a chance to bid for first player. Whoever has the first player gets the first crack at buying supplies. They also get to be in charge of the event deck. There's both good and bad things in there, and whether it's a good thing, it happens only to them and no one else. If it's a bad thing, it happens to everyone else but them. So being first player is very important. They also get the first chance to be the player who chooses where they want to build that round. However, every player is going to get a chance to bid against them. Whoever is willing to build for the lowest price is going to be who wins the auction. In this case, the yellow player was able to make that selection for 350. The black player was able to get that for 330. And over here, the red player was able to do this for 310. So at the end of the round, you're going to fill in those spots with your purchased cement, collect that money. But you also have to pay out labor, so keep that in mind. Over the course of the game, the board will fill up more and more with these cement tiles. It has two game end conditions. One is at the end of eight rounds, or it can end sooner if a certain amount of tiles are built, depending on the number of players. Your points are the money that you've collected, as well as these various regional bonuses based off of if a round is completed, who contributed the most cement. There's also neighborhood bonuses that apply to the entire board, based off who has the longest chain of squares built, who has the most squares built, and who has squares built in the most regions. This game plays three to five players and is a great family weight game that anyone can play around the table. It really shines at four players, but what we're experiencing is a lot of player interactions. You're constantly bidding against each other, making partnerships and alliances. You also get a chance to, uh, similar to a game, let's say, like Sheriff of Nottingham, make wide open bids and bets. Let's say, if the yellow player is bidding against the red player, the black player might really want the yellow player to win, and they might say something like, hey, if you keep on bidding, I'll give you an extra $50. Or, I won't take that spot if you don't take this spot. So there's wide open negotiations, and that adds to a lot of really fun negotiations and a lot of really fun player interaction. I think that Pave the Way stands out because it has a low barrier to entry, it has a wide audience potential, and also it has unique mechanisms and unique theme. Thank you for your time, and I hope you'll consider Pave the Way.